gentlemen, please welcome to the stage of us for leading, Celine! Two hands together, guys, and make some noise! Hello, Glasgow! I am so lucky to be collaborating with my, not only a lovely friend, but the lady who makes this place happen, Dawn Isaac. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I would just like to say this has been a long time in coming. For those of you who don't know, Celine Salon was meant to come to Glasgow before lockdown happened, and then she was meant to come again when the lockdown got lifted, and then we went back into lockdown. So it's an absolute pleasure to have her here, and also to have her friends who've travelled from London and other parts of the UK. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to say, can we just give another massive round of applause for accommodating us? Oh, we really appreciate yeah. it. I'm, really okay. I'm also going to start the show uh, with uh, tonight is dedicated to a few of us know to Jake Black, whose birthday was a couple of days ago. Let's give a big one for Jake! Yes! But, uh, so, Celine Salon has been going for six years, and it's always been a dream to get out of London and collaborate with other places. We're also very privileged to have um, Frank Rafferty here, all the way from Derry, uh, from Blue Bell Arts, and Rachel, who've helped start the island. You know, it's, it's fantastic. And next we've got Wales, so out of this we're putting a book together, all of us, Frank, uh, Dawn, and it's a Celtic collection of all the people that perform within that book. It's um, an anthology. We did volume one, which uh, had 29 writers from all over the world, and we're very lucky. Uh, Joe Dark's in the room, um, Tom McCoy, we, we all, Lucy George, who set up Wordville Press, has been fantastic in publishing works in performing arts. So, Lucy, that you're here in spirit. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today because she's jetting off somewhere probably and getting like pushed. <laughs> Thanks, Lucy, you cheeky move. <laughs> so, our theme tonight is heroes. So, for me, a hero doesn't have to be a famous hero, it can be an unsung hero. So, I actually wrote this at seven o'clock this morning in the place we're staying over the road. And it's called, My Husband is My Hero. <laughs> my husband is my hero, he earns an honest bob. He treats me like a queen and paid for my nose job. <laughs> you never hear him moan, comes home every night. But who'd have ever thought his fetish for my might? He spreads it on his ears, he spreads it on his toes, he stirs it in his beer and wipes it on his clothes. He rubs it in his hair, that sticky horrid mess, and so I do declare, I'm feeling very stressed. Oh, you bastard, get that fucking marmite off the wall, I'll throw this crumpet on you. I've told you about this, now fuck her off. My husband is a snorer, and me, maybe a little, but he's a proper roarer. My bones are turning brittle. He bellows out from his chest, it rolls from his top lip. And then to top it off, I still can't get no kip. From clips on his nose, to rolling him on his side. Oils with Indian rose, just leave me bleary eyed. Oh Lord, just let me sleep, where is the gaffer tape? My love don't make me weep, I need a quick escape. I told you love, stop fucking! <laughs> the bloody duvet's eating the ceiling, me bums at the light bulb. Cheers, mate. <laughs> My husband is a grafter, he buys me lovely frocks. But gone is the laughter when I'm picking up his socks. He rolls them in a ball, he leaves them in the loo. <laughs> <laughs> I found them in the pool and even in me stew Floating in our fish tank, one in a biscuit tin Two in the fruit and veg and another in a wheelie bin <laughs> Now I'm too young for a casket, my patience has worn thin Just stick him in the laundry basket, it really ain't a sin I told you you little bugger, if I find another one of these I'm going to jump him right up, I'm going to shut on you a bit <laughs> 
husband is my hero, my husband is my joy, my husband is not fearful, he's still my cheeky boy, yes my husband is my hero, and yes I love him so, but if you don't pick your socks up, I'm telling you to go. Thank you. <laughs> Gary, you're meant to be laughing. <laughs> Let's kick the night off with the wonderfully talented slum poet extraordinaire, Catherine McFarlane. Thank you so much, Celine. And after that uh, wonderful, upbeat start, I'm going to bring it right back down again because I'm a slam poet. I'm sorry. Are you scared of dying? I'm sorry, look, I know it's Friday night, that's not the kind of question you slide down the bar between pints, it's just that lately all the talk has been so small or crammed full of chemical details and I don't really understand it all. And there are so many questions but they're all just different shades of scared. And we should have been more prepared. This is the conversation we haven't dared to have yet. And we're not just musing hypothetically on life's fragility or our own mortality. This time, it's real. And I really don't know how you feel. I mean, when you close your eyes and think of death, is it some big guy all in black, maybe on horseback? Or is, or is death already part of your life? A blessed relief, like a warm breeze on a beach or a friend walking beside you, but just out of reach. God, I sound like a Hallmark card. I knew this was going to be hard. I've watched you fighting it. Calm as the needle sinks in, breathing through radiation, joking you always knew you needed therapy, just hadn't imagined it would be the chemo variety. Are you scared? That ask, question asked so many times before. Exam scared, first date scared, end of the aisle scared, labour ward scared. Are you scared? And you were always far more prepared. Had a book or the right words for it, but what book do I get you now? The Art of Dying? The final words or simply one on how not to cry because we've come too far now together to cry uncle, too far to cry at all and we both learned when we were small that crying doesn't fix anything at all and I don't need tears to see what it hurts, your scars say it all, you're scarred but not scared, we have all seen your strength, seen your dignity, unafraid of your own fragility, you have been everything I know I could never be but tell me, are you scared because because I am terrified. Terrified we're out tonight together for the last time. Terrified to sleep, too scared to sleep, too scared to eat, too scared to leave your side. I am terrified. No, death will come calling. And you'll ask me to keep breathing. Breathe in. Breathe in. Without you, I am panicking. Breathe in, breathe in. Look, it's Friday night, and this Friday night starts out like every Friday night before. Clothes scattered all over the floor, nothing quite right for what just might be the best night of your life, or at least this week's highlight. So you're stripped bare, but you don't care because you're contoured to the max. Lipstick from an ad that promises that the exact right shade of red will turn something dull and boring into something bold and interesting and this night you are sure you have got the exact right shade of red so you've downed a bottle of it just in case. You slide on something short and tight, it is Friday night, slide on siren high heels, feeling ten feet tall, feet hurting like hell, you stagger to the nearest bar, down a Bacardi breezer or something even sweeter to swill out that strange taste of displacement and still it lingers. So the drinks get shorter, shot after shot and still you've not quite got it, that easy, breezy, beautiful, still more kind of shy, scared, resentful of those Friday night good timers who seem to find it all just so Damn, easy, another drink should ease you into it. 
But the drinks get shorter and small talk makes you smaller until exhausted you shrink in on yourself. Absent yourself, drinking absinthe by yourself and like some post-Brexit Britain, casting around desperately for a last-minute trade deal, you settle for something more than a little disappointing. And he's breathing beer in your face, muttering something about your place and the lines on his shirt are moving and so is his mouth, but you can't hear what he's saying until suddenly you're watching from above in slow motion and you're vomiting on his really, really shiny shoes. (laughs) And nobody moves. Then he's calling you a cow, and so is this blonde girl now. I think someone spilled her drink. I don't see how that's my problem. Stagger, heavy breathing to the bathroom forehead. Cool against the mirror. Redo your eyeliner. Contouring looks shite in here. It must just be the light in here. And scrawl a question mark on the mirror in exactly the right shade of red. Half wish I was dead. And this girl's worrying, some other girl's giggling, and this big guy saying, I, um, I think it's time you were leaving. And you're out on the street in the cold on your knees, Bacardi Breezer in reverse, and I don't remember the rest. Wake up next morning, stomach heaving, tongue cleaves to the roof of Saturday. Breathe in, breathe in, keep the vomit in, breathe in, breathe in. Don't dare look at my phone, I've got no idea how I got home. Breathe in, breathe in, these bruises on my skin, I don't understand the story they're telling. Breathe in, breathe in, and I want to ink respect into my skin, but I've heard that respect only comes comes from within. Breathe in, breathe in. Why do we have to break just to try to fit in? Breathe in, breathe in. Go back to the beginning. Breathe in, breathe in. Ink love into your skin. Let it slowly sink in that you were loved from the very beginning. Breathe in, loved even like this, loved even this mess. Breathe in, Breathe out. Keep breathing. Thank you so much. That was one about my one of my very special heroes. In fact, there's lots of heroes in that poem. There's all those people that pick you up from the bathroom floor, those friends that put you in a taxi and get you home that you can't remember. So lots of heroes in that one. This next one's still keeping that theme of breathing going, but um, yeah, so sometimes you need to be your own hero. I have climbed a mountain that started as a path amongst trees taller than any I have known until scrambling, bleeding over rocks, I faced the final cliff laced with chain. Hands sliding on each link, I pulled upwards and landed. Feet firm on top of the other side of the world, gazing seawards, where once men and ships stared back and called this place Warning. I have ridden the waves and swum deep beneath the ocean and it has owned me. Each heaving mass throwing me to the floor, showing me I am stronger than the broken shells scattered by the wave that went before. I have fought with the sea until learning, gazed skywards and went gently to the shore. I have slept a summer. By the smallest waterfall, diamond-decked waters tumbling under the dizzying spell of dragonflies and the soft, sweet song of bees. It was there the sun kissed me and dressed me in freckles, so I'd remember that childhood is everywhere and summer in each day. I have lain helpless with laughter in the snow, two tiny bodies warm atop me, hollowed out angels each side, gazing heavenwards, counting stars and howling at what was left of the moon, until ghosts crowding close and muscles burning, I pulled a sledge full of my own blood homewards, singing to keep the darkness at bay. I have lived in the spaces between each breath. Thank you. Thank 
thank you very much. And I'm going to finish with one tonight from... <laughs> It still doesn't come naturally, because this is the book that came out during lockdown, so I haven't weaved it around a lot. Um, but I'm going to finish with one from here um, called, well, in the book it's called Seven for a Secret, but in my notebook it's called Lies. My father said, let sleeping dogs lie. Lies. From the cliff edge, like black sheep in wolves' clothing, howling and warning in the face of the mindless, the whitewashed, the woolly who bleat in time to the party line, flock from mall to movie, tabloid to BBC, grazing endlessly on a diet of dissatisfaction in the pursuit of perfection, that type of perfection that can only be bought, the type of perfection that serves as a distraction from distorted reflection of 24 hour of world without hope. A single black and white bird, one for sorrow tonight, tomorrow on 24 hour repeat we stand and bleat at a single black and white bird, shiver in the downdraft of fear from her wings like magpies distract ourselves with shiny things yet here is the seven the flock has forgotten here is the secret we must never be told the secret is no secret it is there in the stories of old dismissed as superstition but which once danced from generation to generation tongue to tongue brought alive by the fireside the secret is no secret look again at your plumage the black and white is the lie they see that, unfettered by fear, you would be eager for the sky and there is no need to teach an eagle how to fly, not with the wind of change on your wings. But it's when I speak of these things that dear old auntie says, do not rock the boat. Do you not understand you can drown within sight of shore? And I find myself clutching at straws, always uncertain, always unsure. I mean, sure, I understand the science of drowning. Blood thinning, oxygen diminishing, lungs filling, heartbeat stopping. But can you drown in just rain? Can you drown in the slow drip, drip of other people's pain? My mother says, least said, soonest mended. But I don't want to mend this. I want to pick it apart at the seams, unpick stitched lips, hear the silence scream their stories, our stories of colony and power and blood and war and family and shame and sorry. We have been so busy killing a man in the sky with science that we learned only to think in black and white, forgot that we know the secret of flight, that we are the one and the two for joy, and together we are bold. This is a secret we must never be told. My grandmother is crying for the baby that lies dying, thrown out with bathwater gone cold. But I smile at my daughter. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Catherine Farland. Yes, and she. I know a few people here have commitments, and I really appreciate that you made so much effort. I want to be. Yeah, let's do more, please. Talking. Thank you, Catherine Farland. Well done. Um, also, we've had to. Sw uh, Marie, I've swapped you with Keith because he also has a commitment, so I do apologise. Um, this man has credits all the way down his arm with acting, music, film. I saw, I've checked you out. And um, I'd, we're not going to say too much, but I just want you to give a lovely, warm welcome to Keith Warwick. Thanks very much. Fucking hell. Uh, I'm going to, because uh, I've got a chair here. Not that I'm, I'm so old that I need a chair, uh, but <clears throat> my memory's definitely going because I forgot my guitar strap. So, bear with me while I fuck about with my technical issues. <laughs> now, <laughs> brilliant, I just get my beer here. Okay, so. Thanks very much. 
The name's Keith. And the subject being heroes, I, uh, it's pretty easy for me, really. It's my dad. So, um, <clears throat> working class hero, uh, three masters, all with distinction. And, uh, you know, he said to me always, you know, as a kid, the only way for the working class to drag themselves out of the mire is through education. Unfortunately, my dad has uh, Alzheimer's now. So, I go round and I see him on a, a Wednesday night and I play the guitar for him. And sometimes you've got to judge it, you know, so if I'm playing a Springsteen song or whatever and he becomes distracted, I go, right, okay, we're not in the 70s. So I'll try Elvis and he'll, he'll spark up. Oh, we all fucking Elvis. Uh, and uh, I'm like, right, we're in the 50s. So I've got a wee uh, collection, as you can see, I've written my set list on my arm. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm only going to do four or five songs. But uh, the first one being, it's an Arthur Alexander song called Anna. Now, uh, one of my sisters is called Anna. And he, he doesn't know who she is. But he likes the song, so if you um, if you just bear with me while I, I play the, the songs that my dad likes, then it's a great way for me to get round this idea of heroes and hitting those marks all the time. <laughs> okay, so Anna. <laughs> Not last time. Thanks very much. This isn't even my guitar. It's got, it's got a tuner in it and everything. Mental. The guitar I use at my dad's is like. My pal Davey gave it to me and it's like. Yeah, it's like. it's. I said I need a guitar to take to my dad's. And uh, it's like, you know, if you play the guitar and you get your first guitar, the neck is always like, you'd, you'd need, you know, you'd need like hands, like shovels. <laughs> so it's kind of, that other guitar's kind of similar. This is a luxury. Right, what have I got? <clears throat> so, this next song kind of livens them up a wee bit. It's an old country song by, uh, I think it was... Chess Records, 55, something like that. A guy called uh, Eddie Fontaine. Uh, please bear with me. I'm finding out what love is all about. Every single day when school gets out. See my baby, I get a week at the least. Nothing shaking but the leaves on the trees. Hey, my boy, 
should be such a dog on trees. Nothing shaking but the leaves on the tree. We meet the gang and I go to rock and jump. Catch a jumping on the heels and the toes. See my baby try to give her a squeeze. Nothing shaking but the leaves on the trees. Watch the rock my heart and threw away the keys. Ain't nothing shaking but the leaves on the trees. Got a way that makes me act like a fool She spends the money and lets the breeze away cool I'm begging for a kiss and some of my baby She gave me some loving baby Please, 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 please One day the wind will blow the sun will shine Baby, tell the day that I'll be yours again 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 What is so amusing here? I mean, it's sometimes with my, with my dad, you know, I think he thinks I'm just a carer that plays the guitar and makes his dinner. And I'm like, ah, that's, that's, see that picture there? Who's that? And it's very obviously me. And he'll go, me. And I'm like, ah, no, that, that, that's, that's me. And I found another photo, and it kind of similar to the other one, but not quite as cool. And I says, oh, I suppose that's you as well. And he went, that's almost me. And I thought... <laughs> That's a fair, fair, fair boy that you've got me. And I tell you, he's, he's forever getting you on technicalities. I was walking across the road with him. There's loads of traffic. His wife's called Linda. And so I take his hand. And I'm going, Christ, this road's really busy. And I was thinking, I better warn him, you know. I, I, I said, you never cross the road, you know, without holding Linda, her eyes, hand. And he, <laughs> without, without Linda, her eye. And he went, or me. And I was like, that, that fucking great eye, or you, of course. So what I'll do is I'll play a wee song. I mean, he used to know the words to things. It's funny, you know, like he would know the, all the words to Del Sharon's Runaway, but he does he know my name. And I'm like, fucking hell, the amount of times I've left that house nearly greeting. But the, the, the thing is, he's, he's happy. You know, he's not, he's not... He's not overly anxious or anything, he's, you know. Anyway, so um, he no longer sings along. Uh, he does this sort of inward, eerie whistle. You have to find the positives. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is a Tommy Tucker song. So again, it's just a bit of, it's just a bit of rhythm and blues. <laughs> I'll try that again. <laughs> Tommy Tucker's like, that's not my song. <laughs> Put on your red dress, baby. I put that wicked on your head. Put on your red dress, baby. Put that wicked on your head. Cause I'm pretty sure now, baby. Pretty sure you're gonna knock him down. Should be here. Solo by Graham Warwick. Put on your red dress, baby. As we're going out tonight. Put on your red dress, baby. Cause we're going out tonight. 
case some fool might wanna fight it. Thank you very much. So well do so finish you off with this with this next absolute cracker of a song. Uh, Again, it's about, you know, every, I mean, everybody's dad or their mum or the heroes in your family. Sometimes it's not just about, you know, he played for Partick Thistle and Wolves briefly, he was in junior football all over the place, won everything. Same with my grandpa, he won the amateur uh, cup and uh, he was with Govan Emerald and um, my wee brothers was with Dundee United and Arsenal. Now, I've spent my career mincing about the boards for a living and I, I genuinely think that I'm a monumental fucking disappointment to the football <laughs> legacy of my family. <laughs> However, that aside, sometimes it's not about your achievements, you know, that you can, you can have a bit of paper that says that you've completed, a, you know, a succession of tests and that you're qualified to do something. And he has, certainly has plenty of them. For me, it's about the time... It's about the time that your parents spend with you. You know, from when you're a wee kid, straight through your adolescence, into your adulthood, it's about the... And I try to do it with my wee, my own wee girl, Clyde, is just spending that quality time. Now, whether it's just cuddling up and watching a movie or you know, cooking together or dancing or whatever, it's just that quality time. So this is my last song for the hero that is my dad. Uh, and uh, <coughs> this is about, this, this gives you a real indication of what age I am, by the way. As you can tell, I'm a real fan of being out of tune. a spaceman, the fastest guy alive. I'd fly you round the universe on Fireball XL5. We're out in space together, conquers of the sky. My heart would be a fireball. Thanks very much. Have a wonderful evening. I'm a bit serious the track now. Hello, Peter. C'est pas vrai, monsieur. Let's get this bugger up. All right, hold on. It's a bit too right? There we go. Got it. Yeah, you know that. Although I'm short, but don't take the mickey out of me, all right? And I'm half French. English, Irish, French. French for the jealousy. English... No, sorry. French for the jealousy, Irish for the guilt, and English for a feather up my arse. I don't know where that came from, but hey-ho. Anyway, moving on swiftly. We held... During lockdown, we really tried to keep the torch burning with the salon and help people have something a go-to creatively. So we created a digital platform where we put Celine's salon on YouTube. And we also had workshops where we taught uh, writers how to write comic monologues. And um, we've got two of the participants here, I shouldn't say part of the writers. And the next lady that's coming up, it's so beautiful to see her flourish as a writer, as a performer, She's an individual comic genius in her own right, and all I'm going to say is watch this space in the future. Without further ado, do do, do you do the voodoo that I do? Maria Mas.
Hello, Wanda's Waxing Salon, Westminster's Premier Waxing Salon, to the Tory party man to speak in our can I help? Oh, hello, Mr Johnson. Well, you'd like an appointment, would you? Got another party coming up, have you? Legal one this time? No! <laughs> well, it be then, um, your usual landing strip. <laughs> oh! Going for a full back sack and crack this time, are we? Ooh. Is that because you ain't got anyone landing on your strip no more? <laughs> so, uh, oh no, I was just joking, Mr Johnson. I'm sure you've got plenty of jumbo jets queuing to get up your runway. If they can find it, eh? <laughs> Oh, um, no, no, uh, Mr Johnson, no, I, I, I didn't say if they can find it. I said if they can fund it, because we all know you're very expensive, very exclusive, and you don't just let anyone up there, do ya? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, no talking about your balls, Mr Johnson. I think you best get back to balls up. I mean, running the country, hadn't you? Yes. Um, so, shall we... Uh, Shall we put you in your normal slot, shall we? Uh, two o'clock on Tuesday. Hmm. Lovely. All right. Got you in there. All right, Mr Johnson. So we'll see you next Tuesday then, won't we? Yeah. TTFN. All right. Oh, God. It's a thankless job, this is. Tell you what, though. I wasn't always destined to be a receptionist in a waxing salon to the Tory party. No, I believe that I was destined for greater things. I keep having visions that I was once a great warrior queen, driving my chariot into battle, my flame hair flowing in the wind behind me, a great vast army advancing, six great stallions ahead of me. That's right. Ladies and gents, I believe that I, Mandy from Dagenham, was once <gasps> Boudicca, Queen of the Arsene, Avenger of the Ancient Celts, Scourge of the Romans, the greatest warrior to ever have lived! <laughs> I'm 
Cubans go and take them down in their fancy theaters. Take back everything that they... What's that word again? Oh, yeah. Stole. So let's begin. I won't give in. I know this battle I've got to win. And then we'll be... Waxing Salon, Westminster's premier waxing salon to the Tory party. Man, just speaking, how can I help? Oh, hello, Mr. Sumac. Oh, you'd like an appointment, would you? Oh, you're going to the same party as Boris again. Ha <laughs> uh, ha! What'll it be this time then? Um, anal bleach, as usual. <laughs> oh, you'd like a reputation bleach? Oh, now, that will be a bit more expensive and will take a bit more time. You might have to uh, fork out a bit more for that one, but you've probably got a bit of money there, you know, from your wife and that tax she didn't pay. Nah. Yeah. All right, lovely. You're all right with that. OK, so should we book you in your usual slot as well? On Tuesday, yeah, I've got an opening <laughs> at, uh, yeah, four o'clock. Can you make that? Lovely. Wish you soon at. Here we go. Reputation bleach. All right. Lovely. So I'll see you next Tuesday as well, Mr. Sunak. Lovely. Thank you. TTFN. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Maz. I'm sorry I did that, Maria. That was That's I, right. I didn't know the <laughs> What? Well, isn't she brilliant? <laughs> um, it's like seeing her go from there all the way up to there is like astounding. All right? Give me another 50 quid, love, and I'll butter you up more. All right? <laughs> all right, my son. I feel like a bit of a gangster's wife in here tonight. <laughs> Oh yes, darling, I fucking feel like a gangster. I feel like I want to get in that cage and I'll stick my husband in there and smother him in chocolate, the dirty old bastard. 20 years I've been married to him. I'll tell you what, we were really poor when I was a kid. A cabbage was like a football, a fart was like an air freshener. But I never grumbled, that's right. Because we all buckle down and we sing a song. Oh, I'm a smelly old cow. Oh, I'm a smelly old cow. Don't even try and think. Because I do love to sting. <laughs> right. Very last minute, beautiful guest. I was very privileged to be on his show, radio interview online. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to go into it. I just want to give you a really lovely, warm welcome to Mark McGee. <laughs> I'm only here because someone else is a sore ear. <laughs> the last year appeared to be filled with fake news, paid views, deep fakes. Every film I've seen on my computer screen seemed to be remakes. I gained weight by being chained to a chair in the name of the entertainment, played the blame game with the rest of them as King Sculpture gained their facelift. At one point, they bowed down bakers with the breeze. At one point, they locked down bakers sat in the place. Eat my body weight and steak bakes and make do with microwave and microchips. Every time I saw that Bill Gates face, 
others. And I think we all learned that every one's an expert these days, well, apart from doctors, nurses, or the experts, obviously. There was winners and losers, and yes, beggars can be choosers. I self-isolated myself till they opened up the boozers. With the caveat for me that background music should be booming, every Zoom call was confusing. Just another muted tuning. This city's always grim, but this one was different. The youth were by quick still, yet they dragged it every minute. The critical thinking definition of cynic means that everyone's a skeptic, but their heart's not really in it. It's more question everything. It's question everything! Except the sources that I parrot, Frenchers end up damaged because lines and sand became apparent and the Brexit and the review, the worst of two wrongs, the past the tax dodge for Boris is another queue formed. From months to months we lost in packs, we roamed in tribes, took sides and chose our facts. At the point when we hope that we slowly fall in the park, high five my dad through the glass, it all happened so fast. What is heroes? What are heroes? This isn't a bit I'm just generally thinking out loud because I didn't know there was a theme. <laughs> but I dedicated to my dad who passed me last month, he mentioned that song. Shout out to my dad! Shout out! Bad father, but great cunt to get wasted me. Good mate, good mate, you know. And on that subject, Jake Black shows to Jake Black, he says, birthday! <laughs> Another amazing cunt. And yes, yeah, shouts to Jake. And um, yeah, I'm going to do something a little bit more upbeat. Fucking legend on Mick Mikey, shouts to Mikey on the sound desk. Can we, can we keep up fun as we know? So this is fun as we know, Lord, so I'm just going to do a bit of material that's... I made, I made an album under the name Jack O'Troves last year called At This Point. And it's not ready out of date, so just pretend you're still locked down. This is called Fun As Been Out, Lord. With the portals punched by the benches caused by the mischief of others And the barmy board barred in the arm of the starving artist The man that only just got in here So the last man standing on the slate Night taxes and guestless passes Sometimes I wonder with those rosy tinted glasses I miss the stage craft and backstage banner But have to make cash when you're having after parties Cause I exist in a niche within another niche With the only paying customers are undercover police What a daft career for when the fans can't see past A Scottish accent, yeah they want you to be real I go out a day to disappear like sea facts appear All again, no one might appear desperate I enjoy annoying critics who never even check that You know on the desk, Jack will trade with the press back Fun has been out long But we can still work for now there was a brief part of marks where the roads were calm There's no open nights of studios but plenty of traffic jams I feel lonely, wonder where are they all going? Can I be camping cause it's no stop snow And I hear neighbours and strangers are you on the streets screaming Suppose that's a sign that nature is healing My Euro tour is over, cancelled all flights to Hanover Not feeling right, is it Covid or a hangover? Everything we worked for vanished overnight The decimated nightlife, the shopping's still shit Everything's more difficult, confused, but right Forgot my mask, I cannot buy one without going inside But I'm stuck outside, it's a vicious cycle So got on my bike, raging sheep, my fist at the night for one viable we don't fear a storm, people we know a tale My secret's true shot keepers or a seagull Fun has been outlawed But we can still work for now Fun has been outlawed But we can still walk about Every state with an radius and don't take the piss Every stay with an radius and don't take the piss Stay with an radius and don't take the piss Stay with an radius and don't take the So my name's Mark, I'm on a podcast called You Call That Radio. Thanks to Simone for asking us to check it out. She was interviewed on it a couple of days ago. And then this song's about how I imagined the, my band, the Gyro Babies. I went on stage 
and I was I was the generic hype man for Loki. I don't know if you're the Loki, but I was a generic hype man, and I went on stage and I pretended that I was opening up. It was the Scottish album of the Eurowords, and I pretended that my band won it and opened an envelope. And then it kind of came back to bite me in the ass because someone went, I heard that you've got nominated for Scottish album of the year. I was like, oh, did we? But it's not, it's just because I told a lie. <laughs> I mean, this song's about that. It's about pretending that you won Scottish album of the year. So many people have heard this song. That they do think that I won Scottish album of the year. Shh. I never. It's like the other seven of these won Scottish album of the year. Really? What do you mean I'm too drunk to finish my beer? I just won Scottish Album of the Year. What do you mean I'm too drunk to finish my beer? I just won Scottish Album of the Year. What do you mean I'm too drunk to finish my beer? I just won Scottish Album of the Year. What do you mean I'm too drunk to finish my beer? Just like, so what I won the summer, Luki won the honor, Jerry Cinnamon won the fucking lottery. Oh well, I think young fathers won everything else. The World Cup, Univision, and another moon, then we was keep out with my banner, that that's a stupid part in my face from ten years ago, the lovely lucky banner. How will they give me all the new year pay for the dormant when they went no back and say, Davo, let me be in, let me finish my beer, and I just want Scottish album of the year. What do you mean you do it? You mean you stole my idea? I just want Scottish album of the year. What do you mean I'm too drunk to finish my beer? I just want. What do you mean I'm too drunk to finish my beer? I just. 30 years ago to play the Beatles, made the white album last year, I admit I might have made a shit album, but the label, the funding, the rest, the fun, the making something new, and if I miss a month ago, I thought you were going to take that to play me, I'm talking about the show me, so feel me doing this just with that question that they see when the last night we was a problem, as in problematic, I somehow accidentally used my own accent, because kids can't be a win to make a nice dramatic, but for me, I can add a wee track, but... I can be true to you I would never leave you Cause my postcode is G2 Choose, watch a piece and choose I'm more DIY than my being true One day I'll maybe learn to fill out a form Then pick up on that day I'll be seeing you Come on, let you in the wee club Think you're not be drunk up with the bar And with bong in the knee health for knee cuts Three times, three times. Okay, the fourth time being cancelled because of lack of interest, but you know. Lack of criticisms. Round the fourth time. We've got to do the course one more time. Ready? What do you mean I'm too drunk to finish my beer? What do you mean I'm too drunk to finish my beer? I don't know, I don't know. You've won it as much as I did, every single one is. How many have I got? One, two. Two more. Two more, two more. Okay. Yeah. That song track stays, let's go for that. So the app on the vocals, we'll see later on. Nothing but for so on the span with laughing at how laughing scrambled the language 
I used to be in the prison now it means you're shit at dancing Insecure cycles pinch the power of the kitchen Now I shut my eyes with sleep Walking down the aisle with rhythm Rhythms and beats So we're overriding wisdom Make your shy guys off the seat Then your feet fall and drift And so we have to admit That the spark is existing Coming to the system of the keys and form the system With the and serotonin and no It's a bit different motivation is the key I could walk still Fitting me a pattern Last pattern I picked a running horse from a squat party in Brixton I see my dead friends walking guy and in a lift them That hold him on the way to his funeral from the way we think <laughs> My wife, I was riding at the deep end He thought that I was screaming Cause the water was too freezing He could barely swim himself But he dived in to get me gone Bless the atheist for helping me Now I set him I fell, that drifting on a shipwreck Merely, the scene goes fuzzy With an orderly mess His wife flashes as the waves Crash down in these verses To bless as the storm last Shows no mercy It's hard to explain But it stays with me for death a last confession is the tight for curses But it's mad I forgive you Some will get to forget you Go for them to the way And all them want to help you They will cut who we're abounding to Why the mention of you But the powers and the trees in you Whether that upsets you I always save that night With an act of brilliance That would happen every day Then even if it kills you We'd pick them Or I've picked them But I'm an easy taking blame Credit for decisions, 99% is instinct Look, it's all been determined words and songs From the spirit that we're always learning from Thank you! If there's a second microphone, we'll get Joe Darkop If there's not, we'll just do it myself Is there a second mic? Is that a pain mask? Right, let's welcome the stage Joe Darkop of Minerva Waves to twist this she also plays ba bass guitar in my other band, the Gyro Babies. This song's called Fred Donovan. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dawn, for having us here. Thank you, Saloon, for the beautiful salon. No, that's been brilliant so far. Yeah. Conscious on the beat. It's about never getting funding. When we'll create in Scotland, send us the text, it's never throw out the form. And so, when I'm not accepting PRS, owes me money and it's driving me to It's not being this upset since the Christ, it's just no rejection, it's a demoral related motion track. To call the plot, just hyper conscious, quick they gossip as an abstract concept. not all work from our sponsors, they aren't even born yet. It's in the game, boxing now, I'm hunting up to a lot more. Weighing up the options of sorting my arm off the boat Cost a pretty penny to shut the alarm off I set in motion, smoking fire with the coolest components Set up the signal, it's the same as we said, we were subordinates Sales and dogs, I'm not even called Sales and stuff, and the mess to blaze them as they stand to strip Ignorance of fear of the anonymity Who from in the premiership at the peak held their own Cheerio, Kanto, we get this sown by our own bits The wrongness, the shortness, the waste And our own drummer was to stop this cringe He can't himself, he should diagnose Do an egg in the wind and do his infamous noses This is Joe the Ark
Schmoly macaroni. <laughs> that was so brilliant. And you know what? We've got more. But we need a little... I think everyone needs a drink, don't you? You all look like your tongues are going to lick <laughs> the floor in a minute. <laughs> Salivating with nothing. But anyway, let's give a big round of applause for Catherine McFarlane. <laughs> Keith Warwick. I've actually locked you all in. You are not leaving this building because you're going to stick around. Joe is closing our show. We're so lucky. Everyone else that's coming on is going to be brilliant. If you miss it, you're a bloody twat, all right? Now put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thank you. By day, she lies a mummy in her tomb. At night, she rises out a dumb goin's womb. We bramble coat and fern fat fleece. She stumbles down by roots and clabber. Mid stir and beast and glower and moon, she sups grey gallon water. By swirling crow, she dips her toe and floats upon a lily pad. West Highland walkers come and go, oblivious to this bonny lass. But Tarbeth Hutters know her ways and feast upon her halcyon days. But if you truly wished to meet and touch her heart by froggy lane alone at dusk he starts. Sit down here. <laughs> wow, got bloody. Oh, it's cozy here, isn't it? Let's just take this off. Thank you, Leslie O'Brien. What beautiful words. That was like a lullaby. Could you just appear at the end of my bed and pop up and just sing me to sleep, please? In a beautiful way. Stunning. Wow, thank you so much. <clears throat> so, um, I was talking about Maria Maz earlier, and she's started a new tour, haven't you? And it's 
Scarlet. If ever you're down in London, we could, come on, let's promote it. Harlots, strumpets, and tarts. Oh my! Ooh. It's about the Georgian sex trade. <laughs> 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 Ooh, it's about the Georgian sex trade. Well, I'll tell you, if I've been around in those days, I'll be giving refunds, love. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But uh, I'm going to do a little piece for uh, Maria in one of her shows, and I, I love history and I love how women have been like left field and been strong, like Boudicca, you know, and men, it goes both ways. So I'm going to do a last little a cappella piece for you, and it's dedicated to Nell Gwynn. Under the smoky streets of London. Come blow your shining trumpets, leaves of laurel green, you know where she has been. Pretty witty now, our strumpets. Through the dangerous lairs of Ohuju Rihilahin, she stood in a doorway. And with her face so fair, shining flaming hair, could be going your way. Who will buy me lovely oranges? Who will buy? Who will buy? Oh, how grand it is, fun it is, joy it is. Who will buy? How marvellous, how spectacular, the orange lady of King's Theatre. All the slums, they may kill you, uh, but have faith, my tempting rose, for you have won the hearts of many, and this life you must dispose. Under that blackened face emerges the one and only beauty, the most stunning of them all, is going to the ball, knowing she must do her duty. But who will take this little lady? Who will take... Who will take for how grand it is, fun it is, joy it is, love it is. How little Nelly needs warmth in her belly. Yeah. Right. Another lovely treat. <laughs> it's been quite, because of the train problems, Tom has had quite an adventure. He was meant to be here Thursday night. But he got here and we're so grateful to have him. Can I give you the wonderful, talented writer, poet, wordsmith extraordinaire, Tom McColl. Yeah. Hello, everyone. This is smooth. I might just sit down, actually. It'll work all right like that. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> right, so, like, well, I know you've been all enjoying your drinks, but a warning, don't get too drunk, or this may happen to you. 50p. I was once so drunk that when I got home, I fumbled round in my pocket for my key, and taking out instead of 50p, attempted to open the door with it. You eventually came down, thinking someone was trying to break in. But when you realised who it was, you let me in. And I was so grateful, I tried to pay you with the 50p, as if you were just some hotel maid or porter looking for a tip. And there you were, thinking charitably it was just some kind of blip. But recently, I was once again so drunk, that when I got home, I fumbled round in my pocket for my key. And as there just so happened to be on this occasion at least, no change in my pocket to confuse me, I found my key, but found it no longer worked. In shock, I kept on trying the lock. You eventually came down, thinking someone was trying to break in. But when you realised who it was, you simply opened up the letterbox, and I was so grateful. I said, it's me, could you let me in? But instead of letting me in, you simply told me to fuck off. And when I said I live here, you said you haven't lived here for months. And then when I said I had no change on me, and asked if you had some to give me for the bus, you told me again to fuck off, and that if I didn't, you'd call the police. And with that, I left without having even been offered 50p. And sometimes, when I think about that, I feel hard done by. <laughs> now, for any of you who uh, struggle to remember people's names, this poem is for you, and it is a true story. Jan, Jen or Jean. I hadn't seen her in years. 
Her name was Jan, Jen or Jean. I couldn't remember which. My face lit up like a fruit machine. When she caught my glances, we passed each other on Southwark Bridge. Hi, Tom, she said, as if she, and, as if she, and as if she pressed play, I felt compelled to take the chance. The names began to spin inside my head. Jan, Jen, Jean. I pressed stop too quickly. I had little choice and settled on Jean. Hi, Jean, I said. We passed. I pressed collect and got a sick feeling in my gut as the name Jan for first prize flashed before my eyes. I'm still, still red-faced over that, thinking about that, that incident. So, and that was in the 90s, so anyway, yeah, that, was, so, that was terrible. Oh, dear. Anyway, so the theme of tonight, tonight's theme is uh, heroes, and this is my poem that I've written especially for the event, um, for tonight's show. Uh, on that subject, and the hero in this case is a pop star, um, and the poem is about a teenager in the present day who's who, unimpressed with the current crop of pop stars, is um, much more interested in this pop star from the past and has become obsessed with this pop star from the past, and this obsession has become quite morbid, and the poem is called Dead Pop Star, and I realised actually I'm I basically appropriated the name of the first single by Glaswegian pop band Altered Images, and they had a single called Dead Pop Stars. And I always loved the title of that, you know, that I loved that title, and I just wanted to make something out of that. And um, uh, what the lyrics that Claire Grogan uh, sang in, the, in, the, in, her, in that song. So, um, you know, that's where the similarity ends with the title. So, <laughs> Dead Pop Star. I'm 16, and my head is filled with dreams of being a pop star, albeit a dead one. In fact, it's fast become an all-consuming morbid obsession, but with nothing for me in the 21st century, and being 40 years too late for new romantic, I'm stuck with being just necromantic. As I summon each night from 1981, the most beautiful voice there was from that time, or any time, ideally via a black magic circle of vinyl, or failing that, the demon that is digital. And then in my mind, replace the pop star's name with mine and possess their voice, their body, their persona. Except, of course, I don't. All I've managed to achieve with this constant desire to feed on the unsettled blood that somehow flows still through my fave dead singer's vocal cords is turn myself into a gaunt and grey-faced stay-at-home teenage vampire. <laughs> and knowing I'd die in the sunlight of shame, if anyone was to ever discover the truth, I'm forced throughout the day to rein my imagination in, wearing it like a cap cape of invisibility, and it's only at night alone in my room and from deep within my cranium castle that my imagination finally gets to fly, swirling like a bat with its blind sight switched on so that when I close my eyes I truly see. Each night that's what I do, and all I ever do, dream of being my fave dead pop star. All the best ones are dead. Why is it that everyone's good is dead? And why is it too that some people possess amazing talent, while some people, like me for instance, don't? I've all the charisma of a corpse, whereas the corpse that is the dead pop star somehow still has all the charisma. At any rate, each night, while doing as ever a strange out of rhythm, jerky and unfathomable dance from listening to the captured voice on die tunes, I remain aware this really isn't a way to live, living my life through someone who's dead. But what can I do? Whenever my favourite artist plays, and especially when my all-time favourite track comes on, I live not for the present life, but for a preserved life. And during the brief but brilliant brass-heavy middle eight interlude of an otherwise synthesised but sensitive song, I chant, I live on the blood of another, this pop star who will dead, live on dead forever. I cannot see my face when I peer into the mirror. I'll see nothing till my dream comes true. So that's actually. I mean, I'm actually pretending that's a you know a 16 year old in the present day, but that was actually my life at 16 anyway. So that was uh, you know, and anyway, so that's uh, and I'm going to read then. So that was the kind of the latest poem that I've written for Celine Salon, and I've been going to Celine Salon since 2016, and this is the first. The poem that I, the first poem I wrote and read, wrote for and read at Celine Salon back in 2016, 
And the theme then was the seven deadly sins, which was a great theme. And, uh, and I was certainly covering one of those deadly sins with this piece. And the, piece, and the poem was set in Soho. So I thought I've definitely got to read it as um, Celine Salon in Soho. So um, anyway, this poem is about yet another moral panic, this time involving fruit and veg. And the poem is simply entitled Fruit and Veg. <coughs> The Vice Squad, man of... I'll start again. <laughs> it's like, I'm doing a news report there. It's like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's what it's, it kind of reads like, actually. I haven't read this for a long time. You know, I'm sitting down in the... I just need a table in front of me, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. The Vice Squad, van der... I, can't, I still can't do it! <laughs> this one's proving very problematic. It was, uh, anyway. It wasn't like this the first time round. Anyway, it's leaving some... Right. The vice squad manned a fruit and veg stall on Berwick Street to trap a fruit fetish ring believed to have been... It's really, oh, one more time, that's it, that's the last time. The vice squad manned a fruit and veg stall in Berwick Street to trap a fruit fetish ring believed to have been, been involved in groping grapes. And the elaborate sting instead three members doing the strawberry squeeze, the bent banana stroke and the apple shine. A rest on a tip of iceberg lettuce, screamed a tabloid headline. The papers warned this new breed of pervert was determined and astute, and had no trouble finding traders running stalls of ill repute. In Soho, one could tell prostitutes had found another service they could sell, when plastic luminous tomatoes replaced red light bulbs in windows. And it was soon clear that fruit and veg abuse was rife among the clergy too. It got so bad that the church felt compelled to cancel celebration of the Harvest Festival, and the Archbishop of Canterbury was moved to make an impassioned plea. The Lord has given us fruit and veg, not to play with, but to eat. The vice squad even had to arrest two bobbies on the beat. They were found in the lounge of a pub which had a back room, where an illegal fruit and veg show had only been moments before been in full swing. And though claiming they'd entered the premises simply to hand out anti-knife crime leaflets, the officers had trouble explaining why each had a cucumber attached to his belt in place of his truncheon. <laughs> And it wasn't just police, but judges, lawyers and prominent politicians getting caught. It seemed like the very fabric of society was falling apart, and the PM's response was quick. He brought in severe penalties for fruit and vegploitation. In a speech he made it clear, if you abuse the carrot, you get the stick. <laughs> well, that was, uh... And after I went to the first of the salon, that was it, I was hooked. You know, it was like I you know, just went back again, and I just loved how friendly and welcome it was. And it was like it was the coolest event in Soho and London, but it was also so friendly and welcoming, and just like a rare combination. So I kept kind of going back, kept going back, and here I am in Glasgow. So, anyways, thank you very much, yeah. Celine, for coming to Glasgow. Yeah. All you do for everyone. So, thank you very much. And I'm going to end on this uh, short poem, and um, because it's, it's, you've probably noticed in all our pay packets that. We've got less wages now. But see, the government's, there's obviously the, the increase on the, uh, the, ta the, the national insurance, and the government's having to find more money for the NHS, and this is their latest cost-saving innovation. The surgery I go to as a two-headed doctor. The surgery I go to as a two-headed doctor. Dr. Smith will see you, see you now. It gets very confusing. Dr. Smith, by his left head, gives me a diagnosis. Then Vary's right head gives me a second opinion, which always differs from the first. And that opinion is never the best one, always the worst. When Dr. Smith examines me with a stethoscope, it's in the left head's left ear and the right head's right ear. In other words, he makes a right pig's ear and also a left pig's ear of any examination he does. However, when I once challenged him about it, Dr. Smith's left head simply said, can you breathe in a bit more deeply, please, while his right head shook morosely. Apparently his wife has got two heads as well, and two pairs of breasts. It's said they met as impoverished but physically normal students, earning money by undergoing laboratory tests. Two heads are better than one, they say, but I'm not too sure that comes into play while attending an appointment with the always in two minds, Dr. Smith. Thank you for listening. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Mwah. All right.
Okay, thank you. Another Tom McCall, what a genius. So I can't do this because I'm mic I'm going to sit down. But we've got a lovely, lovely special guest for everyone special in the room, but I'm about to bring up Joe Dark. But before I go, I'm going to do a bit of tart in here. All right, read all about it. What you got here, love? Rolex? Rolex. It's up to you. Um, so we've got, uh, obviously, it will be great. This is the first ever Celine Salon. And for everyone uh, in this room tonight who would like to be part of Volume 2, we would love to publish a piece of your work. Uh, the one thing is, we don't keep your copyright, it just goes into this lovely book that will be spread around. So Volume 2 will be Ireland, Derry, obviously. Uh, we got to Tembe in Wales, which is really exciting, and Glasgow. So please watch out for that. And I'm going to go with your bottle green, by the way, Frank. I thought it's oh, a really good suggestion. And the music thing, that's genius. Uh, also, we have uh, two of Tom McCall's books. Uh, Grenade Genie, we've been on the radio with. Please, just there's a table at the back. Come and support the artists. And I love Frank and Willie's CD and all the proceeds go to the food bank in Glasgow. And I know she's about to come on, but I'm going to plug it. We've got Minerva and the Weir and these beautiful prints. So, anyway, I want to say thank you for a really lovely night to everybody that's helped us put this together. I know it's been difficult with COVID, and, but we, we got here and we'd love to come back. Um, I want to say a very big shout out, thank you to Catherine McFarlane. Warwick, to Maria Maz, to Mark McGee, to Ashley Chapman, to Pinky, to Leslie O'Brien, you're all right in now. Oh, 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 there's more, there's more, oh! So I did say Pinky. Grace. Grace! Oh no, that comes at the end, you missed that bit out. Who have I missed? That's really bad. I don't want to miss it. Frank Rafferty, what am I doing? And Willie! And to all of you for being so supportive and to Dawn Iser, all the manager, the bar staff, to Mikey, our sound man, to Grace Cargill for helping us, to my lovely husband who's hidden away there, rolling his socks up on the bed and snoring. Um, and yeah, and thanks to all of you. And please let us have a marvellous big... Oh, shit. <laughs> Well, let's do that. Get rid of that. I'm going to make... Are you all right? Sorry, love. I've got to make sure your mic's all right. Let's close the show with one of the biggest... Blast Fest talents, Joe Dahl! Hey, okay, I'm going to try and start this one stand. Okay, done. I thought that was going to be harder than it, it was there. They fumble about for a while. Uh, just before I start, can we have a big round of applause for Celine for putting this together? Amazing, a woman. It's been fantastic, thank you for having me involved. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start the night as Joe and slowly manifest the goddess Minerva throughout my performance. <laughs> so, this is Joe. Uh, so I'm from Fife originally. Um, and I was um, trying to meet a deadline. I had something I really needed to do for work. And um, as we all do while um, trying to meet a deadline, I was procrastinating like fuck. Um, and I started thinking about, in Fife, we use the same word for do as is don't. So the opposites sound exactly the same. Um, so, uh, while I was procrastinating, I wrote this poem about procrastination and the weird intricacy of the Fife dialect that makes the, op the word it means opposite sound exactly the same. So, I will say, I wondered whether I should do this one tonight because I performed it a week ago and a girl who wasn't from Scotland came up and said, I had no idea what you were saying through this poem, <laughs> but I'm going to give it a bash and see what you think. Okay, so... Addy Ken, if a day Ken, oh, should I could she qualify here as well? If you don't know, the word Ken means no. <laughs> In east of Scotland, not here. Glaswegians laugh at us for saying that, so um, anyway. What does <laughs> Many things <laughs> that you're about to hear. Um, okay. Addy Ken, if I day Ken, 
or a deacon. A de de a wait till a day can, or de I go forth even though I just didn't can. A day can that procrastination breeds rumination, and I day ruminate a lot. I just day can how I day manage to do a little more with my thoughts. An anomaly, a boring day, a smile facing the wrong way. I day can, but I have a hunch that I actually day can. Yet doubt and fear they hang about tense. I know I do need anything, though I feel like I really do need something. But do I really, really need that something? That's an absolute tune, by the way, and I do ken how Harrison wasn't afforded more kudos. Something in the way she moves. I do no distraction. And I do ken how to stop this reaction to these floating thoughts that are never meant to be caught. How do I stop? Circle back, loop the clock, lose the plot, muse is dropped. And that swells the feel that I day can if I day can or I day can what I day. Ken what I'm saying like say. <laughs> well, maybe that needs to be okay for this day. Pulsing thoughts sent to bed might surrender to a more peaceful way. And no I day can how or what or when. I did can one day I left this damn pen. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry if you didn't understand that. I'll be more coherent <laughs> from now on. So I thought I would just really quickly try this thing, okay? I don't know if this is going to work. All the talk of Tories and coal miners inspired me to just try and do this um, little bit of a song that my band, The Twistettes, do. So we are a loud punk band, me and my sister. There's lots of drums, lots of distortion, um, lots of shouting. So I'm now going to try and do this with hand claps and your help, hopefully, all right? So before we go, before we get going, um, we might need to practice the chorus. Now, we're only going to do one verse, one chorus. Don't worry, we're not doing this for hours. But um, so all you need to do is think about the Tories, think about our system, think about all your frustrations and irritations and just dismay at the situation and just scream. Let it all out, okay? I'm going to do it louder because I'm on the microphone, all right? So please just scream with me. So we practice it first, all right? So it just goes like this. We're going to clap as well, right? From cocoon she reaches and is reached in one spinning flow. Wretched and effervescent in equal measure, she pulses, prickles and perspires. She is preceptor of her path. She is real, yet she is illusory. She builds and hones and while chiselling bones, she slowly unfolds. Minerva's essence flinches as she steps forth through boulders and slime. Her first breath of air laced with soil and gold takes her there. She digs her feet into the ground below and feels. The wind whispers through a haze of shattered glass and as it reaches her ears, its reverberation is piercing. She pauses, then a lone sharp inhalation. A tear falls from her earth-laden eye as she asks, what has happened here? As the earth and wind chime incessantly all around, her form is firming and soul burning in equal amplification. Tattoos and tales of monstrous acts of greed under the guise of civilization echo as her core cracks. She rips open her throat and shrieks into the night sky with such urgency that the sun rises instantly. Flares of hope in the distance, flames licking her toes as she strides out into the world. But despite this glimmer, all she feels is that the toil and drill of self-interest obsessively prevails. 
Her fruit has ripened beyond control, mutated and corrupt. She is lost. Leaping over rocks to meet the lapping waves, her last hope is to be assured that there is good here. The sea swings in circles. Mild-natured spirits inhabit this space and they have a true want to save the human's grace. Yearning pictures of sacrifice and kind-hearted vice, liquid potions evoke anecdotes of songs that lift the spirit and unite, despite the wider woe. But no matter how the river tries, her feet remain planted on clay that tells her from soul up how she must sway. As extreme as her awakening, her spine now entwines in a coil of zeal pulled from every nook. Through wild hair and bold eyes, she ignites. Fluorescent light spikes like multifaceted sheets of pearl. Her teeth clench as she summons everything that is back to her breast. As time disintegrates, her form gently implodes. And with this, unequivocal love is restored. We are back to inception. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I'm just going to do a couple of songs at the end. Like I say, there's some merch at the back. Come speak to me after if you're interested. Um, yeah, I'm going to take a drink of my water and then become the goddess. <laughs> so this is um, two tracks from the Minerva Weeks album. It's on Spotify and all those horrible sites. But um, yeah, so...
Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Again, I just want to say thank you. And I'm, so I'd thank, I'll probably love you at the end, Ashley Chan, all of you, lovely. Glasgow, I would love to come back again. We'd all love to come back. Take care. And sending lots of love to all of you. Bye-bye. <laughs>